Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light going live for you in the Serving Officers Facebook group. For those of you who might be watching this on the replay and want to find out a little bit more about this Serving Officers Facebook group, over 4,000 members, check the links below. People who are already in the police helping to support each other to prepare for promotion boards, specialist interviews, transfer interviews, or just young in service and look into the future. Uh, preparing for that time when they are just going to go for it, get that specialist position first time, get promoted first time. So sharing with you today uh, 10 things that are going to help support you in preparing for your specialist interview or promotion board. And it's based on some one-to-one -one work I did with a client yesterday and today. I'm not going to say what force they're from, but they are preparing to do a sideways move from response as a constable to a tactical support group type position. And so we've been preparing this individual for um, that position, that, that specialist interview, by actually practicing the sort of questions that they're going to get. So 10 things here that are gonna be able to help support you, ensure that you succeed at your board or your interview. And the first one is buzzwords. So many of you seem to be of the opinion that you need to use buzzwords from the competency and values framework to help you pass. That just isn't going to work. I'll tell you why. Because remember, you're serving police officers, you're going to be interviewed by a serving police officer who's probably of the rank of inspector, chief inspector or superintendent. You know them, you work with them. There's very few of them I've ever come across that love buzzwords. Once you start talking in buzzword language and start dropping in all sorts of phrases from the competency and values framework, you're just going to piss them off. So don't do it. You've got to be your authentic self. And my client today and yesterday was absolutely that. But it's the first question he asked was, should I use some buzzwords? No. And after working with him for a few hours, what came out was his authenticity was just exactly what they will be looking for. Um, so uh, number two, um, go into some depth. So when this individual was talking about certain individuals within the community, he said, I don't want to stereotype them, but actually, and he talked about their, their background a little bit about how they were more likely to commit crime than others. Now, we, when we unpick that, stereotyping what we actually came up with was it wasn't stereotyping at all he was using evidence based research around things like adverse childhood experiences so that it's not saying with certainty that this child was going to follow a certain type of route in life but it's more likely than not and so if you start bringing in evidence-based research around things like adverse childhood experiences you're going to shine more than the officer who doesn't like it or not that's just a fact so that's number two, the number two top tip. Number three, bring in other agencies, bring in other agencies. So um, a, a lot of, especially when it's asking the question about working with others to solve a problem, make sure that you include the other agencies that you worked with. Or if you're just referring to working with others within the service, look at interdepartmental work and how you worked well with other departments. Working with others, just sticking to your own team is okay. It might work, but it's just not going to have that sort of strength of answer that's going to give you a high, high mark. Um, where are we? Number four, there is no we. All right, I'll just be really clear about this. There is no we. The amount of times my client used we, then what we did, and then what we did, and then what we did. No, I. There's only I in your answers. I know you're part of a team, but I want to hear how you worked as part of a team. Number five, <coughs> excuse me. If you're going to say that you use something like the five step appeals process, explore it and demonstrate how you did that. What you did as the five state step appeals process, how you did it is by utilizing open questions. And so that was the initial part of the five step appeals process. It's the open questions in this case that were really powerful. And oh my goodness, when the client explained how they develop those open questions and the cues that they used, the answer just became stronger and stronger and stronger. So make sure you're including that kind of detail. Number six, 
For this position especially, going into a tactical support type position, uh, one of the requirements on the job description is that you need to be able to demonstrate that you are, have a really good understanding of the sort of legislation that you're going to be using. It also says on the job uh, description that this will be tested and evaluated or assessed at interview as well as application form. So during your answer, what I'd like you to do when you explained how, for example, you used force or you made a certain decision, explain the legislation behind it. Now, when I tested my clients on the legislation that underpinned their decisions in this particular case, they faltered a little bit. And I got to the point where I was saying, well, are you asking me or telling me? So you need to be confident in your tools and powers, confident in your tools and powers, and explain them and bring them into your answer. Because that's your rationale behind your decisions, and it demonstrates that you understand the legislation that you're utilising, which is one of the key things that's needed for that position. So that's number six. Uh, number seven, where is it? Impact. So when you're talking about the situation, which is the first part of your structured answer, and make sure that your answers are structured, uh, think about the impact on others. So when you're describing a situation, you can talk about the impact on all sorts of different levels, varying from impact on the community to you and others. And we talk about that in great depth. There's about four or five different angles you can look at, which makes your answer a lot stronger. Number eight, I spoke to my sergeant. Well, I want to know what spoke looked like. So for my client, we did something called the seven levels of how we got to the fourth level and he got it. Yeah, all right, I get what you're talking about now. Um, spoke doesn't mean anything. How did you do speak? Well, I approached him. Yeah, but how did you approach him? And then we went into the fine detail of how my client actually briefed the sergeant up and provided the sergeant with a variety of different options as to what the next step would be. And the sergeant made the decision, but the decision was based on the recommendation of the officer. So that is far more detailed than I spoke. Does that make sense? So that's number eight. Number nine, quite simply, make sure you describe your role. So have a start for each answer. In my role as a, on such and such a team, at such and such a place, and if it's something that's complex, and something that's an unusual role, describe what that role involves. In this case, it was on response, so everyone gets that. But I've worked with people who have worked in things like covert surveillance um, or in techni the technical surveillance unit, and their world doesn't translate into the world of the interviewer, so you need to explain a little bit about what your role involves. But always start with that, and always make sure you've got that kind of start to your interview. And the last thing, number 10. Don't try and include too many examples in your answer. Make sure you're answering the question. So in one of my client's um, answers, which was about working with others, he actually described something that was very operationally tactical, something that he actually did. He spent about two and a half minutes of his five minute answer talking about something that was completely outside of answering the question. Make sure that you understand what the question is. Make sure you're actually answering the question and providing valuable evidence that's gonna to contribute to the marking guide for that question otherwise you're going off at a tangent and they might not stop you they might not stop you so it's really important that we don't go off at a tangent so there you go folks 10 things that are going to help support you during your interview there's a lot more than that i could probably come up with a list of about 100 things that are going to help support you in your interview but that's 10 things that leapt out today from a live experience of doing some one-to-one -one coaching with a candidate that's just going to be awesome it's just going to be awesome at the end of every one of my coaching sessions, I never wish anyone luck. And this individual won't need luck because they're doing the preparation. They're doing the practice that's going to enable them to get really good pass. So for details of how to access those one-to-ones and the interview courses and for serving officers, the Enforce Advancement Group, where we practice once a week in webinars and it's £3.33 a month. Can you believe that? Then check the details below. And just to answer your question, Callum, because there's several of you who are watching this live, but Callum's asked a question. What do you think about GMP allowing transfers into specialist roles? Well, you've got to dangle a carrot, haven't you? If you're desperate to get officers in, there's got to be a carrot. One thing I don't agree with, though, is how the same opportunities don't exist for officers who are actually in force at this moment in time. Bit unfair, that. Come on, GMP, get your fairness sorted out. So anyway, there you go, folks. Ten things. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. And like I said, if you're watching this on the recording, check the links below. Come and join us. 
be awesome. Ensure that you pass first time for your specialist interview or your promotion board. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye for now.